Hello, hello, happy Saturday. Happy Saturday. Happy Saturday. Yes, I'm so, so, so excited. I got a week long vacation coming up, so I'm excited. Yes. But before I went on vacation, I wanted to come on here because starting tomorrow, I will not be typing or commenting a whole lot. I will still be seeing everything that is going on. You guys comment and asking questions. If you inbox me, I will see it. But I will not be on here um, like I was this week. I'll start that back on next Monday. So the last Monday of this month, um, which I don't need, I can't even tell you the date. <laughs> <laughs> the last Monday of July, I'll be back doing my whole weekly um, education. Hey, 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 Cynthia. Hey, D. Erica, hi. Hey, you guys. Thank you for popping in. So, share, share, share. Sharing means caring, right? <laughs> yes, it does. So, share this video. Um... I wanted to come on here because I'm getting so many questions. You guys know um, this happens quite often. Um, usually not this early. Usually this starts happening around August and November. Um, but it's happening earlier. So I'm getting a lot of questions. I'm getting a lot of people who are new to the page so they're seeing things hearing things they're wanting to know things so I'm like all right you know what why not i am in florida i'm in florida the sunshine state i am in florida hey sean hey sissy poo hey tyra hey yeah so uh that's why I was like, let me just go ahead and come on here and talk to you guys for a little bit. If you got questions, type them in the chat. I'm going to answer questions as we go through this um, video today. As I go through this, I'm going to answer questions. So, you know, feel free to ask those questions. I am also going to, after I'm done with this video, I'm going to save it and I'm going to upload it also to YouTube. So, if anybody is watching this on YouTube, you're not going to be able to see the comments. Um, and you may be confused as to what's going on, but this is originally being done on Facebook Live. Hey, hey, Kirk. Hey, Ashley. Hey, Cynthia. Oh, I see my boo, Tamika. Hey, my boo. Um, when was the last time you talked to your ex-husband? Oh, gosh. Hmm. Let's see, the last time I talked to my ex-husband is when I wanted to know why I was getting a letter for him going to file for bankruptcy last year. So, yeah. <laughs> That's the last time I spoke to him. Poor Tink Tink. Yeah. Um, we do not communicate at this point. I have no reason to reach out. Um, you know, if a conversation happens, it happens. It is what it is. All right, so um, how do I stay positive after everything I've been through? I, uh, it hasn't always been that way. I've had moments of, you know, not feeling my best, not wanting to do my best, and not wanting to be my best. But at the end of the day, can't change the situation. Um, just got to keep moving forward. I have four kids that, res that um, depend on me to be here, so I have to just keep moving all right so thank you guys for tuning in so if you don't know my name is renee burgess but us uh, as you see here i am affectionately known as ladybird um i have been hiv positive since november i was diagnosed november 21st 2007 november 21st 2007 is when i went to the doctor um because i was sick i got sick and i was pregnant throwing up nauseous now um 
my sickness of being pregnant, the things I dealt with during my pregnancy had nothing to do with the HIV virus. So I wanted to make that very clear. When I got sick, it was because I was dealing with normal pregnancy things. I was nauseous and throwing up and went into my prenatal doctor. And at that moment, I had not went to my first appointment. My first appointment was to be that following Monday, which would have been the Monday after Thanksgiving. And... Um, I went in because I was dehydrated the whole nine. They gave me IV fluids. I'm sitting in this little room. They gave me these IV fluids and the doctor comes in. And now, of course, I'm with him at the time. She comes in, asks him to step out. She talks to me. She lets me know that she has my labs back. And because my appointment has to come up, but I'm there, she wanted to go over my labs. And as she goes over my labs with me, she lets me know during that session that my labs came back and said I was HIV positive. Now, was I scared? Hell yeah. I ain't even going to sit here in front. I was very well educated and uh, on this virus prior to my diagnosis. I was a medical assistant, a phlebotomist. So I knew all the things that had to do with blood. So I knew what the HIV virus was. I knew how you contracted it. I knew everything about it. So, but it was just to think, wait a minute. You mean to tell me I've been doing all the right things my whole, you know, at that point I was 23, what, 24 years old. 24 years of my life I've been doing what I'm supposed to do. I've been doing all this stuff and you tell me this, this has happened to me? Really? And so, um, it was just one of those things like, wow, okay. Um, you know, and... That's when I realized that, you know, he knew. We got in the car when we left that appointment. He looked at me and he said, don't tell anybody. And I'm looking at him like, did this man just say don't tell everybody? Because keep in mind, I'm drugged up. They gave me Finnegan. They gave me all this stuff. So I'm drowsy at the same time, too. So I'm hearing all this information. I'm doped up and drowsy. And I'm just like, what? And so... He tells me, yeah, don't tell anybody. And I didn't. And I didn't, I didn't tell anybody because he told me not to tell anybody. I didn't tell anybody because I had to process it on my own. To figure out, okay, what do I do? How do I move forward with this? We just got married. We got married August 4th, 2007. My diagnosis was November 21st, 2007. So it was like, whoa, you know. Um, ultimately... I chose to leave him. I chose to leave that marriage and I chose also to have him prosecuted. So I filed charges against him for knowingly infecting me with the virus because it is a crime. It is 100% a crime to not disclose your status to someone and have sex with them without their knowledge of knowing you are HIV positive. And this can also stand for other STDs as well, not just HIV. So a lot of people don't know that. Um, now, one of the questions I keep getting asked, um, uh, why didn't you do X, Y, and Z before you got married? Okay, so here's the story with that. So prior to us getting married, it was already time for me to go and get my yearly tested done. I got tested every year because like I said, I was a phlebotomist. I work with needles. I work with blood. You don't never know when you could get stuck by a needle working. I'm I, when I go get blood draws, I don't feel it. So I could be working, asking and sit myself, and never even know it. And so every year, I always went and got my test done. Um, and so when I did that, and I say, well, since since I wanted to establish myself as a patient with his primary care physician, let's go to this doctor, tell them what we want to have done, why we want to have it done. And let's do it. Now, prior to that, of course, I didn't know his status. I also didn't know that his primary care physician knew his status because, again, I don't know anything. So I'm in here in the presence of him and his doctor. We're talking about getting tested. The doctor says, okay, we'll do testing. So I'm in one room. I'm getting tested. He's in another room getting tested, as far as I know. Come to find out, while he's in the room with the doc, he's in the other room. He's actually in the other room with the doctor. The doctor is telling him, you know you're HIV positive. Do you want me to tell her or do you want to tell her? Because if I tell her, I have to tell her with you present. 
So do you want the opportunity to do this on your own? So he told the doctor he wanted to tell me on his own. Hey, my little boo. Hey, 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 L. I I see you. Um, and anybody that's asking questions, when I get to a certain point, I'll go back and answer questions. And so, um, you know, he's in this other room. And the doctor's telling him this. So when we come back together, because he's already told the doctor, I'll tell her on my own time. The thing was, well, at this point, just go ahead and tell her you're negative. So when we came back together, um, and this is, of course, after testing, because we did the whole two-week wait. So when we went back to the doctor to get tested, I mean, to get our results, when we went back to the doctor to get our results, you know, we're sitting in front of this doctor. And because I trusted this man, this is what I tell you guys about trust. Yes, trust your partners, trust your spouse. But listen, trust and and, and uh, take care of yourself first, always. Yes, you can trust anybody. You can love them to the fullest, be in love, be all of that joyous and blissful stuff. But be that to yourself first, okay? So I trusted him enough calling me i don't know who that was i'll call them back they can leave a voicemail <laughs> um so we're sitting in front of this doctor hey lilith i saw your message i am going to probably um i probably need to call you or something i'll message you back though i'll send you a message um so you know i'm not thinking anything is going to be different we sitting in front of the doctor who gonna lie in front of a doctor this is my thing. This is my whole thought process. So I'm like, who's going to lie in front of a doctor? So we're sitting in front of the doctor. We both tell each other that our test results are negative. Okay. Mm -hmm. Negative. So at that point, okay, cool. Weddings in a couple months. Everything's cool. And so, you know, and then our wedding night was the first time that we ever had unprotected sex. Our wedding night. Okay. Our wedding night was the first time that we had unprotected sex. We had sex other times prior to that, of course, but it was never unprotected. And so, you know, that's a question people are asking. Why you didn't go and get tested before marriage? Well, we did. The deceit happened while we were sitting in front of the doctor at the doctor's office. Um, now, during that whole process, a lot of other people were affected by his choices and his decisions. Um, other people were became infected with the virus. Um, another woman, um, he was actually not being faithful in that marriage anyway. He was cheating. A woman had a whole baby after our wedding and before I divorced him. Before I knew, you know, after I knew about my status um, and before I made the, the choice to leave him officially, someone had a baby. You know, so, so much stuff transpired um, through this whole situation. And that's why I made it my choice. Let me tell you, and I'm going to say her name, and I don't think she cares if I say her name. But um, growing up, my family, my grandmother lived next door to another lady. They're about, they would have, they're probably about the same age. Um, my grandmother's deceased um, since 1998. But her and her next door neighbor, they were like the best of friends. So, of course, our family and their family, we always played together. Grandkids played together. Our parents grew up. Literally, one of the, one of her, the lady's children passed today, and my mom went to the funeral today. So, like, this is someone we really know. So, um, I when I first got diagnosed um, and I moved back here to Florida, I started going to a support group. And at that time, I was still pregnant. And so being that I was still pregnant, yes, this was, you know, having a diagnosis was new to me, but I was pretty educated on it. I was asked would I like to go and speak to a group of pregnant women about HIV and AIDS and share my story. And with no hesitation, I said yes. And then I found out that the lady who asked me to come and speak was my grandmother's friends, next door neighbors, one of her daughters. So her name is Eula. And so Eula said, she when I when I walked through the door, she was like, oh my God, I didn't even put the name together. Cause you know, my name, Renee Burgess, you know, my maiden name, Renee Burgess. So she didn't put two and two together. She was like, wait a minute. 
you know, and we had this whole hug and then we had this crying because she was like, oh my God, it, it, I, can't, I can't believe it's, you know, the whole situation. She didn't, you know, everybody who knows me will tell you, like, I'm probably the last person that, oh, I can't stand these fruit nets. Um, go have a seat, child. My kids is trying to run amok over here. Didn't I tell you, Myla? I'm sorry, y'all, hold up. Myla, I told her to cut the TV off because I'm on video, so you do the same thing and get out of there. Thank you. Good, now go. Look, pause for the mommy moment. But what's tomorrow? Tomorrow is our vacation, now go. <laughs> Look, take a pause for the mommy moment. Okay, so anybody who knows me knows I am probably one of the last people that you would have expected to have contracted this virus. Like, literally. You know, I was not sexually active. Like, the first time I ever had sex, I was 14. I didn't have sex again until I was already an adult. Or close to it. So, it was like, wait a minute. What? <laughs> you know, and so when she saw me, you know, but when I went to that event and I spoke to the, that group of pregnant women, I knew at that moment I had to just, I, it was, it was no choice. I knew I had to continue to talk about my story and share it because a lot of people, and I noticed it. I made a post the other day and a lot of you guys, thank you guys. So many comments. I did not expect that post to get as many comments as it did. All I did was ask you guys, when was the last time you got tested? And kudos to everybody who commented, um, and especially those of you who have recently been tested, because this is not easy to go in so, into anywhere and just say, hey, can you go ahead and do that HIV test too? You know, it's not an easy thing. So kudos to everybody who, who did that and who commented. Um, but I did not realize that there were so many people who are married who say, well, you know what? I'm married. He ain't doing nothing. I ain't doing nothing. So why I need to go and get tested? But listen to me. That is the thing. Do you really know that he's not doing nothing? Do you really know that she's not doing anything? Just because it's not happening in your house. Think about it. Trust me. I'm the first one to sit here and tell you I have a very high sex drive. So listen, if I'm not getting it from who I'm with, you know, I'm going to be going, somebody, I'm going to have me a little side, look, yo, we cool, I, when I need it, I can call you. I'm just saying, this is the reality of things. So if your partner is not having sex with you, they having sex with somebody unless something is just wrong with their whole sex anatomy of their body okay or they just or maybe they just self-pleasuring i don't know but what i'm saying is don't sit there and think for one second that the possibility of whoever you're with married or in a long long-term relationship with is not potentially entertaining the idea of someone else okay um you know so I'm going to scroll my comments down because I know I missed a couple questions. So let me see. I know I did answer that one. I answered that one. Sharon, Terry, I don't know if you're still there. Sharon wanted to know how, how he, how's he doing? How's who doing? Um, the person that infected me, how's he doing? I don't know. Uh, let's see here. Oh, look, Tamika talking about she used to be a firecracker. Listen, <laughs> my mouth so unfiltered, but I have learned to channel the unfiltered parts of me into meditation, into just listening to inspirational things. I listen to Sai Guru. I listen to Alan Watts. I listen to um, so many motivational things, inspirational. Mindfulness is the biggest thing that I attach myself to. Um, let's see. Ooh, da -da -da -da. I'm still scrolling. Um, hey, Ebony Harris, do you think people can have it without having any symptoms at all? Like, wouldn't the body start giving off signs if your immune system is trying to fight something? All right, so I actually posted this question the other day as well, um, and posted the actual fact. So, listen closely HIV has no original 
signs, or symptoms. Let me repeat that. HIV has no original signs or symptoms. So, you're going to have unprotected sex. Two weeks later, you got a stuffy nose, you coughing, whatever. Guess what? It could be anything. It could be anything. That is not a sign to say, oh, I got HIV. Or I might have HIV. No. It's not. When signs or symptoms of the HIV virus present itself, is when you are in fact HIV positive, whether you know it or not. Whether you know you have HIV or not, the signs and symptoms of the virus will start to show when you are close to about 10 years of having it. Okay? When you're close to 10 years of actually having the virus, whether you test it and know you have it or not, that is when you will start to see signs and symptoms of HIV. Okay, so that's what I want a lot of people to understand with this virus. You are never going to know whether you have it or not unless you test. So the people who are saying, man, I didn't find out until 10 years later. You want to know why they didn't find out until 10 years later? Because they chose not to go and get tested until 10 years later. They got sick 10 years later and they say, oh, well, maybe I need to go and get checked. Or they get so sick that the ER has no choice but to run every test known to man, and that's what pops up. So there's no there's no initial signs or symptoms of the HIV virus unless you actually have the HIV virus and it's close to 10 years. Sometimes it can be a little earlier, but no, no sooner than that will the signs and symptoms show. And this is when you're not taking HIV medication, okay? Let's see. Nisha. Hi, Nisha Khan Henson. Is it possible to remain HIV positive and never be diagnosed with AIDS? If so, if by chance or strictly with medications. All right. So, yes, there are people who have never been diagnosed with AIDS. They only have an HIV diagnosis. Um, and that is with medications. There are people who we call elite controllers who never have to take medicine because their immune system is able to fight the infection on its own. Um, and so, yeah, it's possible to remain in an HIV positive status and never get an AIDS diagnosis. I've never had an AIDS diagnosis. I've been HIV positive going on 14 years. So it is very possible. Let's see. Hi, everybody else who's commenting. And I might scroll by because I don't think it's a question. So, hey, let's see. Hey, First Lady Walker. Hey, Sugar. She said, hey, Sugar. Let's see. Um, Adrian Dixon says, I live in a small town and they actually posted the mugshot of a man um, infected who knowingly who was normally giving it to women. He got on here and lied like it wasn't him, but it's him and it's sad and it's selfish. Oh, that happens quite often. That happens quite often. Um, yeah. The news is going to put you out there. Okay? Yes. All right. Let's see. I got my music playing background a little bit. Just enough for Facebook not to hear it and block my video for music. <laughs> Um, these, let's see, first lady, my first lady, she's, first lady Walker said, these days I have this thing about me. Every dude that say hello to me has HIV. Maybe weird, but better safe than sorry. Yes, you have to assume, this is the thing, you have to assume that everybody has something until you can verify they don't. That's how you have to think. You have to literally assume when you meet someone they could potentially have something until you initiate the conversation of STDs and things like that and testing. You don't know. So yeah, you, that's a great thought process to have. Um, let's see. Princess flowers. Thank you. I'm glowing. Ooh, hold up. No, I'm just saying. <laughs> um, let's see. 
Ebony Harris said, your spirit is so beautiful. After this diagnosis, people kill themselves after it. So you are very inspired. Absolutely. Literally, li let me tell you guys. I have had to stop people from killing other people for giving them the HIV virus. I had to talk this girl out of taking a gun out of this man's mouth while he was asleep because she was finna blow his brains out because he gave her HIV. She was in my support group when I was in. And she spazzed out one day in depression and had a gun in this man's mouth. Like, I'm on the phone with her. I can't see her because this was probably around the time we didn't have smartphones with videos and stuff. So I'm on this flip phone or whatever phone I had at the time. And I'm trying to tell this girl, listen, it ain't worth it, girl. Don't do it. I, I do not want to hear that. I do not want to be the witness to this. You got to stop. There's other ways around your anger and what he did to you besides blowing his head off. So, yeah. That was that was scary and terrifying and it happens. Um Let's see. I'm coming down. After learning about my diagnosis, how did I feel? Was I angry? Oh, yeah. I went through every emotion known to man. Think of every emotion. So if they had an emotion dictionary, I I was I was the walking talking poster boy child for the emotions dictionary. I had them all. The last emotion that I had was rage. When I hit rage, I knew I had to really take myself out of that marriage and away from him. Because I was ready to kill him. I was ready. I had already thought, I was like, you know what? I'm going to kill him. I'm pregnant and I'm going to go to jail. So I'm going to have this baby in jail. After I have the baby, they're going to take the baby, either give it to my family or foster care, whatever. And... You know, I'm going to be in jail. I ain't, I'm not equipped for jail. I'm not going to want to eat. I ain't going to tell. I'm going to die in jail because my OCD ain't going to let me be able to, to, to be in jail. You know, that was my whole thought process. So when I got to that point of, well, I, you know what? Do I really want to go? Do I want all that to happen? I was like, let me just remove myself from this situation. Hey, TT girl. I see your name pop in. Say, you watching. All right. Thank you, Patricia Roper. I see your comments. All right, Keith Allen. Hey, Keith. It says, what's the best way to tell, tell if someone has it? How can we look at a girl and tell? You can't. You can't. There is no way to look at anyone and tell what they have. There are people walking around here, three, four, five hundred pounds with, um, with cancer. And you wouldn't know it because in your mind... The stigma of cancer is that if you have cancer, you skinny and your hair is gone. Like so much stigma around so many things. So it's like, you can't tell. I'm 145 pounds and I'm a diabetic. When you think about diabetes, you think of obesity. I'm nowhere close to being obese, but I'm a diabetic. So, you know, you can't look at someone and tell anything. So don't use that ever. All right, Crystal Hooks, that's confusing because some people experience sicknesses shortly after contracting HIV. Can you explain? Absolutely. So people who experience sickness after HIV, after getting an HIV, this is the thing. Remember, whoever it is, they don't know when they were, uh, when they were actually, most people don't know unless they know and keep track of their sexual history and when they have sex, who they had sex with. They don't know when they were diagnosed. So if someone gets an HIV diagnosis, because you don't know when they contracted it, they might not know. So when they get that diagnosis, you don't know how long prior to them being told you're HIV positive that they've had it. You don't know. So don't think, when you think of HIV diagnosis, don't think, oh, well, they just got HIV. No. They probably had HIV way longer. And because they got sick or started feeling a certain kind of way, they went and got tested. And that had to have been years. It's not going to be one year, two year, three years. It's going to be years when that happens. Now, you do have some people who already have a weakened uh, and um, compromised immune system. 
So say you have somebody that's already dealing with things like lupus, cancer, um, autoimmune disorders, things like that. The virus is going to attack them very different. Very, very different. Very different. My current husband went, got diagnosed and went for years without taking any medication, which is the reason why he's a paraplegic right now because the virus, all over those years, he kept, you know, he would walk and his legs would give out. He'd be at work and his legs would give out. Something would happen and he, you know, he wouldn't be, you know, he'd feel a, a pain in his back. Years. This is over five years that he went without taking HIV medications. He didn't lose weight. He looked like a regular person. You wouldn't even know he was diagnosed. And literally, he has an injury in his spinal cord the size of a tip of a straight pin. I mean, they did. He had to go through about 14 or 20, 14 to 20 MRIs before they even could notice the injury. The virus attacked his spine. Over the years. So when someone actually deals with the signs and symptoms, it's because there is, it took years of them ignoring the diagnosis or ignoring the fact that they should have gotten tested or, you know, all that stuff. Um, so I hope that answered your question, Crystal. Um, Jessica Sturdivant says, how many meds are you on right now? I'm on two, 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 two meds. I take... Tivicate and Prescobics. I also take a daily multivitamin that's giving me lots of iron and all that other good stuff. And I take a preventative cholesterol pill because I'm also a diabetic. And most people with diabetes also it correlates with high blood, high cholesterol. So to prevent that for, for me, I have that as a preventative. Um, and I'm fighting with my insulin because I don't like sticking myself. So... Transparency moment. Renee, Lady Bird, she don't like sticking herself with with uh, insulin needles and stuff. <laughs> um, highly favored, highly favored. I know a friend that is living with HIV for 40 years and there's no signs now. And she don't take her medication like that. Yeah. It, that People do that. Um, they People skip medicines. I'm guilty. I have been one of those who went and didn't take medicines for at least two years i think i went without taking medicine at one point um and so you know there are times when you might say i don't feel like taking my medicine today it happens it happens with everybody not just people with hiv just people who gotta take medicine for whatever but you and the, the realization is if you want to live you know what you have to do that's the the realization of everything um thank you thank you thank you highly favored um amisha harris hi when did he finally confess oh let's see when he finally confessed he finally confessed when i called him on three-way with the sheriff office because they needed something that was going to be solid and that stuck um and i called him on three-way and I asked him questions because at that point he wanted me to come home. He wanted to save his marriage. Um, and I asked him questions. They recorded these questions. And they were able to, file, you know, prosecute him. And even all the way up to, even all the way up to sentencing, he was still saying that he didn't give it to me. Um, and they're like, but we have you on recording saying you knew when you were diagnosed, the health department records show when you were diagnosed. And so he was like, well, yeah, I'm guilty. Like literally it was that, that nonchalant. It's crazy. Like he's a, he's one of you, you know how you hear people talk about pathological liars. He's one of them. He has one lie that covers up the next lie, the next lie, the next lie, till it's to the point where it's like, dude, everybody know you lying. So, you know, just say, yeah, okay, and keep it moving. Like, you know. Oh, my gosh, Lila. So, Lila said, I, work, I was working at an HIV clinic here in Los Angeles, and we had a client run out of the office and jump four stories and kill himself. Oh, my God. See, yeah. Ugh. 
And you think that that you would think something like that would be if there was a home test done. This is in the actual HIV clinic. Someone got a di this diagnosis and they killed themselves. Even with the resources right there at a grass. Um, hey, T. T said guilty until proven innocent. So I think that everybody has it. But in a relationship, been in a relationship now for eight years, but I get tested. Good job. Um, Miriam says, sorry, but how long have you been living with HIV and how long did it take you to be able to talk about it? So you probably came in after I had already said this at the beginning, but I can shortly reiterate that. I have been diagnosed with HIV for going on, this year will be 14 years, November 21st. Um, um, how long did it take me to talk about it? It didn't take me long. I was, um... Offered the opportunity to share my story while I was still pregnant to a group of other pregnant women who were potentially exposed or infected. And from that moment, um, I took off. And that was within a couple months after my initial diagnosis. Um, let's see. Yes, T, I think if you if you're not taking care of yourself you start feeling sick like other diseases. Absolutely, because Gibson, when I don't do what I need to do with my diabetes, I feel sick. I have no energy. I be wanting to lay in the bed all day. And I know it's because I'm not doing what I'm supposed to do with my diabetes. I eat right, but um, the type of diabetes, I'm a type 2 diabetic. But the issue with my body is that my body actually produces the insulin that I need to sustain a proper blood glucose level. But my body does not recognize the insulin. So I could be 145 pounds. I could be 180 pounds. My body is not going to change because I thought, okay, maybe I need to lose a little weight. Because at one point I was staying around like 160, 155. I came down to 145. 145 has been my baseline weight for years now. And so it's like, it's still there. Because, you know, people say, oh, I lost weight and my diabetes went away. And I'd be like, oh, I'm about to go lose some weight so I could be, like, non-diabetic and all this stuff. And I got to 145 pounds and I was like, I don't want to be no smaller. If I go smaller, I'm going to be looking crazy. I, I don't want I don't want to do that whole ass shark thing. I can't do it, y'all. I Bobblehead does not look good on me. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm good right here. So it's just a thing of, it's just my body. I had to really sit down with the endocrinologist and figure out what the real issue was. And it's just that my body is just not recognizing the insulin that it's producing. Um, what made me get tested? Sean McCullum. So, again, if you missed the beginning of this video, you can always watch the replay. But how did I get... What made me get tested was the fact that I was pregnant and I had prenatal labs done. And in my prenatal labs was my diagnosis. Um, what's the medication most people take that have HIV? Um, that's really not an easy question to answer, Sean. Only because the medications that you take for being HIV positive are going to be based on the individual person. So my regimen of two pills that I take may not be the same regimen that someone else takes. I might be taking two pills. Somebody might be taking one. Somebody might be taking three, four. There are still people who have to take cocktails. You know that whole handful of cocktails? There are still people who have to do that. And guess what? Unfortunately, when people are non-compliant and don't take their medication and build resistance to the medicines, they can't take any medicines. There are people right now living with the HIV virus and possibly an AIDS diagnosis who can't take any medicines because every time they were offered a medicine, they chose to not take it properly, and now their body doesn't recognize it. Oh, uh, let's see. Reese Moore, yes, I am HIV positive. I am. Yup, sure is. <laughs> yup, I sure do got HIV. That's how you say it. You got HIV? Yeah, I got HIV. Not to sit here and say I'm happy about it, because I'm not. But when you're presented with something that is negative, you have to take that thing in. What what's that saying? Take lemons and make what? Lemonade. So I had to take it, and I had to do what I have to do. So in taking that virus and knowing that I got it, 
I'm turning that into this awareness. I'm bringing it to you guys real and raw and 100%. I ain't out here asking nobody to send me no money. I ain't out here asking to give me none of that. I'm out here giving you the information, letting you see firsthand. This is what people deal with. This is the things that happen. And I'm educating you. And I want you guys to understand that you can stay negative. You don't have to put yourself at risk to contracting this virus because it's so easy to happen. But if you educate yourselves and you pay attention and you read and you, and you, and you watch stuff, you can sit here and watch Love and Hip Hop Atlanta, Housewives of Atlanta, Palma Talk, whoever, all these places all over the world. You can sit there and you can read a book. You can watch a YouTube video that's educating you on something. You can go to a website and read an article or read a publication that is going to educate you. You can do that. Let me tell you guys, I got books. They over here. I got books for all kind of stuff. You can you you have to step out of the box of thinking that somebody is going to bring information to you all the time. Yes, I'm here to bring you the information, but you have to step out of that box and reach for the information and suck it in. Because guess what? One day, if you don't already have kids, one of those children are going to need you to be able to provide them with the information to be able to live a life as a young adult and an adult. Our kids depend on us to be the first the first contact for information. If you can't be the first contact for information, then who else is going to do it? The streets are going to do it. The schools are going to do it. And we all know how the streets and schools operate. They ain't telling everything. We can't even get a proper Black History Month, but that's a whole nother topic. We can't get more than one paragraph in the history book. And it's all going to be about what? Slavery. So... We have to get this information and reach out for it ourselves. Um, look, y'all don't have me going down the rabbit hole of <laughs> the look, the rabbit hole of ranting. That's what I call it. Um Amisha, what year was he diagnosed and where did y'all meet? All right, so he's been diagnosed for years. Um years. Years. I'm not going to, he's been diagnosed for years. He's been diagnosed longer than me. I'll put it that way. Um, he's okay with people um, knowing his status. Details of everything. Yeah. He like, babe, don't tell everybody everything. <laughs> he does not have, my, my husband does not have, um, he has Facebook Messenger. He has Instagram, but he does not post on Instagram. He ain't posted on Instagram since like 2014. He don't get on Facebook. His Facebook page is deactivated, but he even has Messenger. Because that's how he communicates with family and friends. Um, we actually met on a positive dating website. Out to the point, literally, you guys, listen. Y'all know the stuff I've been through. I'm telling y'all. Yeah, the new husband. I don't know who said that, but somebody said. Um, we met on a positive dating site. I was, at to, the I was to the point, y'all, where I was ready to say, you know what, because... The last person I dated, okay, so 2018, I dated someone um, who was also HIV positive. I never posted about them because they weren't open with their status. Um, anytime I posted a picture, I hide the face and all that, all that crap. Um, and so he was also, again, he had probably been positive almost 20 years, so way longer than me. And I was in that relationship, and um, he... Just kept expressing the fact that he did not want me to be a doctor. You guys know how passionate I am about this awareness and how much I want to become an infectious disease physician. And so he did not want that. He's like, oh, if you're going to be a doctor, they're going to, you're going to have a bio. Your bio is going to tell your story and your status and my family going to see that. Like literally his family knew me. I met them face to face, but they didn't even know my first name. He told them my first name was my, he told them my middle name, which is Yvette, is my first name. So if they went to search my name, nothing was going to come up about me. And so I was like, do I really want to be with somebody like that? Do I really want to like put myself on hold and not do my passion? But he wanted me to be alone with his passion of being a truck driver and owning a logistics company, all this crap. Because I have um, experience with logistics and stuff. So... I was like, no. So I chose to walk away from that relationship. When I walked away from that relationship, 
I was to the point where I said, you know what? I'm probably just, I, I'm going to just be by myself. I don't want to be with nobody. It's just be me and these kids the rest of my life. And I'm okay with that. I was perfectly okay with that. And something just told me, like, you know, just give it one more chance. Just give it one more try. But this time, just try it. If it don't work, then cool. At least you try. And so that's what I did. I got on this dating website. I paid for like, I think I paid for like a, I think I paid for a month. I was like, I'm going to go here for a month. I paid like $39 or something for a month. I said, I'm going for a month. If I don't meet nobody, I'm just not going to worry about it. I was on that website two days. Two days, y'all. And I was going through and you know how they, the profiles will tell you, oh, somebody viewed your profile. So I'm like, who looked at my profile? So I went, I saw a show that he looked at my profile. So now I know that I'm looking at his profile. Now know where he had on his profile that he was in a wheelchair. I ain't see that. I ain't care. I liked everything else about his profile, pictures, all that stuff. He had his pictures hit and I was like, no, I need to see a picture. I need to see all these pictures. You got them on here. Let me see. So, um... I looked at the pictures, and but I never said anything. I've never messaged him. So I guess it showed him that I looked at his profile. So the next day, he messaged me. He was like, so you just going to look at my page and not speak? I was like, oh, I like that. And so literally that same day, we messaged each other. We exchanged phone numbers. And the first day that we spoke on the phone, we were on the phone almost um, 14 hours or more. We were on the phone that long. That long we were on the phone. I was working. I did at, at this time I think I was was I working? No. No, I wasn't working in. I was doing my my business. Um but we talked on the phone just that long. And everything about our lives are parallel. We talked about childhood stuff and I was like, "Dang, I did that too." Like Everything about it was so parallel. I'm three weeks older than him. We both Tarses. I've never dated another Taurus like that before. Um, like, to have a long term and then to, to have a sp as a spouse. Like, what? Um, but, yeah, it's been an amazing journey. Um, it's been a year now that we've been, um, that's been my husband. A year as of um, July 12th. So, yeah. It's fun. I love it. All right. Um, let's see. L says, my ex has been living with HIV for over 20 plus years. He has never missed a day of taking his medication and always on time um, with taking it. The only thing is he developed a buffalo hump from the medication. Oh, yeah. Those side effects, those side effects are horrible, you guys, with some of those medications. It's crazy. Um... T says, I remember when I was younger, I was in um, Convernet. I was in a Convernet house here in New York, and you had kids killing themselves, so it's hard. I got raped in 87, and I've been getting tested ever since. Wow, yeah. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. Oh, my gosh. Um, let's see. Genevieve. Oh, I love your name, Genevieve. Oh my gosh, I love that name, Genevieve. You have no idea. Um, just want to say thank you for educating me on HIV. I read that a person infected can live many years if they take care of themselves. Do you have any children? You're very blessed if you do. I will keep you in my prayers. Yes, I have four kids. So I have my oldest. Listen, I got one. I got one. She ain't out the house yet, but she out of school. So my oldest just graduated high school in May. She graduated high school. She's 17. She turns 18 in September. And if you've been following me, you've known my journey with her. Um, it's been amazing. She's ama She's an amazing, amazing young lady. Um, so she graduated high school. Uh, and I have twins. My twins who are actually pregnant with when I got diagnosed, they're 13. They are 13. Um, and my youngest is seven. My youngest is seven. So a lot of you guys don't know this, but I was married a second time. So the marriage I'm in now, 
yeah it's number three they say third time third time is the charm so don't be judging me to my dang she's never been married three times Ooh. no but the second marriage um i did get married a second time and listen i'm not gonna talk about it on here because my second the, the, the second marriage that is for the exclusive group so i do have an exclusive group so ladybird exclusive my group um that group i'm going to be talking about my second marriage in that group so if you are not in that group you want to get in that group today because i am going to be telling all the deets all the deets because listen i will say this that second marriage um showed me uh it showed me a lot about myself it showed the it showed it showed me how vulnerable i can be how vulnerable I was, it showed me. So, yeah, it's crazy, right? Um, so yeah, if you're not in that Ladybird Ladybird exclusive group, um, there should be a way to, for you to go to my page and join that group. When I finish with this video, I'll post the link to the group. All you gotta do is click join. I'll approve you to be in the group because I'm giving all the deets. People who um know me and follow me on my personal page. They know some stuff. Some stuff I didn't put on there, but yeah. Um, let's see. Reese Moore said, are you in a relationship? Did, you, did it take for you to start back being sexually active? And if it's too personal, I'm sorry. Um, so I did just answer the question. I have a whole husband out here. And he is fine. And he is big. And he is strong. He is 6'2", y'all. I'm 5'5", five, 5'6". Five, five, this man is 6'2". You know, even though he's a paraplegic and he's in a wheelchair, when he does get up and stand for his therapy and when he's doing his home therapies, um, he tall. So I got tall, tall drink of water. <laughs> um, um, how long did it take for me to become sexually active after my diagnosis? Um... I didn't have sex again after my diagnosis till probably a year or so later because I just I wasn't thinking about that. I had too much other stuff. I had I had new babies that were born premature, so I, it was so much other stuff I was dealing with. I just was like, I ain't worrying about all that, you know. Um, uh, let's see. Oh, I do not. Oh, Lord, I want to butcher your name, baby, because I will be butchering your name. Naka. Nakanta? Is it N Nakanta Raymond? I think I'm saying it right. Look, you had me going back to, to grade school, pronouncing syllables and stuff. Yes, I have a book that I have written. How may I help you? Mr. Vicky, you Yes. I'm going to get something in a second. Um, so yes, I did write and self publish. I actually have two books. Um, and a lot of people always say, well, where your books at? So I wrote and self published these books. I really did not do a whole lot of promoting because I feel like for me, when I wrote the books, for me, it was a more therapeutic thing. I got, I got it out. When I did the autobiography, I got it out. Everything that I wanted to say, how I felt, what happened. I got it out. I was able to put it out there on this paper and in this computer and I typed it out. So it was more a thing. It was more of a therapeutic and releasing thing for me to write that book. The second book is a teen book that I wrote with short stories. It's a short book is not a big book, but I wrote it because I wanted to have something out there. When I'm dead and gone, I wanted this book to still be available and be a resource that can be used. When somebody Google HIV books, my book going to pop up and I want it to be a resource when I'm not even here anymore. Um, so, yeah, that I have two books. So, and I've been giving away books. So, if you've been privileged, if you've been lucky enough to win a book, then, yeah, I have books. So, when you see me do giveaways... You better make sure you look and see if you won or not. Because I give away books all the time. I give away books. Here's it right here. It's backwards. But, yeah, I give away books all the time. So, 
And I have a box of them over here. I ordered them just for that purpose to be able to have and sign and ship to you guys without you having to go to Amazon and wait for it to ship. And it then it don't have my personal touch, you know. <laughs> um, let's see here. I'm trying to move through these. Thank you for being honest because I know women who husbands couldn't keep it in their pants and they say they got HIV from them and they they got and do other people the same way and I told her she shouldn't do that. She shouldn't be like that. Think about how you felt. Yeah, that's what happens. A lot of people get diagnosed. The person didn't tell them and they be like, well, somebody did it to me so I don't care if I do it to somebody else. That's how people think. So yeah, it, it happens. Um, hey, Brianna Harrison, you remember me, girl? Hey, do I look the same? Do I look older? Do I look, um, good, bad? What you think? <laughs> I always think that, like, when people say, oh, I remember when you told your story the first time, and I be like, dang, I was young when I got diagnosed. I was young. I was 24. I'm 38. Do I look 38, y'all? Or do I look like I could still be in high school or something? Maybe not high school. They don't even card me no more because I got all this gray hair in my head. Like, if I wear this, I'm going to get carded. If I don't have this on and they see all this gray hair in my head, they're going to be like, um... i am like, you want to see my ID? Oh, no. You old enough. Dang. Well, bump you too then. <laughs> yes. Uh, so... Nisha said, with all the education developed everywhere, do you find that there are people scared when they find out your status? Do they treat you different? Um, For the most part, most people don't really treat me any different. I think it's because mainly most people know my story or they seen or heard or they take the time to at least, you know, hear me tell them how I became diagnosed. You know, because, of course, people have that stigma attached and they say, oh, well, you must be was out there having sex. You must be was out there uh, doing X, Y, and Z. When, in fact, no, I was married just doing what I was supposed to do. So when you when I meet people who actually take the time out to want to know about me and know what happened, you know, um, so, yeah. Um... Let's see. Sharon Scott, I love how you bring awareness to the disease. I thank God I'm negative, but it's only because of the grace of God. Keep sharing. Thank you. Thank you, Brianna. Yes, life goes on. It goes on. Ain't no, don't, one monkey don't stop no show. All right. Oh, uh, let's see. Hey, Tara Lynn. I see you, Tara Lynn. I see your name. I recognize some of the names. Let's see. Yeah, buffalo. Somebody was like, what's a buffalo net? Yeah. If you ever see anybody have like a hunt right here in the net, it's usually a side, of, side effect from medications. Now, not necessarily that they got HIV, okay? Because you can get buffalo neck from anything any side effect and not just hiv so don't be walking around looking at the back of people neck like oh they got that they got hiv because they got a hump on their neck no some people have scoliosis that causes the vertebrae in their um the in their neck to cause a hump so don't be walking around mistaking scoliosis for hiv okay <laughs> hey uh what's the name of the data site so there are many data sites here i got my laptop right here so let's see let me just Google. I'm a, so if you go on Google and put it HIV dating sites, let's see what comes up. All right, we have pause.singles that pops up. We have positivesingles.com. I think that's the one we were on. You have, all right, so there's a website that says the top HIV dating sites in 2021. Let's see what it says. All right, we got pause, pause personals. We have Pause Match, Positive Singles. We have something called H Zone. I think I downloaded H Zone one time and then I deleted it. I was like, nah, this is not for me. Um, we have HIVPeopleMeet.com. You have PositivesDating.com. Meet Positives. 
Paws P O Z Circle. HIV Dating Online. So there's many, many sites. There's a lot of sites. And a lot of these sites are not just if you're HIV positive. Some of these sites are for any STD. So people who have herpes and other STDs, there's dating sites for that as well. People don't know this. Remember I told y'all, I decide, I don't mind. If you don't deal with it, you don't know. But there are dating sites for everything. Um, Trisha Jones just ran across your video and you are a beautiful soul. Thank you for being brave and transparent and informative. I'm a nurse and a lot of people are miseducated, scared to ask or embarrassed to share. So they go for extended times and endangering health even more. And that is that, and this is with any issue, not just HIV. So again, thank you, beautiful, for being the light you are, and will continue to empower people all over the world, known and unknown. You are so welcome, and thank you so much, Trisha Jones. All right, Trisha Jones, inbox me if you're still watching. Trisha Jones, message me um, your address. Matter of fact, I'll, I'll I'll reach out to you. Let me see. Um, I'm going to send you a book and buy your address. See, I just be giving out books, y'all. Trisha Jones, inbox me your address. Oh, I should have put for a free book. I don't want to sound like a creeper. Oh, inbox me your address for a free book to be sent. All right, so inbox me Trisha Jones. I so I can send you a book. All right, um, let's see here. Thank you, Toya Harris. All right, I'm scrolling. I might be getting close to the end. Oh, I got your name right. Ooh, hold up. I got to take, take a sip of the, of the sugar-free pink lemonade because I got her name right. All right, I ain't have to take a sip. I was getting a little thirsty, but yes, I take pride in getting names right because I will butcher a name. Jessica said, I don't usually watch lives, but I'm so happy I watched this one. I learned so much, and I love how really informative you are. We'll definitely be looking for the link to the exclusive group. Yes, girl, come on in the room. Come on in the room. Because <laughs> it's about to go down. My exclusive group is unfiltered. Okay, it's, it's going to be unfiltered. Um, do the twins have a relationship with their dad? No, he's never seen them other than pictures. He has never seen them other than pictures. Um, so no, he does not have a relationship with them. They don't know him. They wouldn't know him if they saw him. And that is not by my choice. His mom lives right here in my city and she's never interacted with them ever. So, hey, it is what it is. But they got all these family. All of you guys are our family. So, they got all the love they need from you guys. That's all that matters. Okay, go sit down. Look, it's getting close to them to eat lunch because they had a late breakfast. So, they keep creeping up here. We ready to eat. <laughs> How long did it take to show up in your system and what test, and what test you take? How accurate is the fourth generation test? So, um, all HIV tests are pretty accurate. Um, of course, you can have tests that are going to give you, that can potentially give you a false positive. That even pregnancy tests, any test can potentially have a glitch in it. So, all the tests are accurate unless there is an issue with the actual individual test application itself. Um, for me, okay, so we had unprotected sex our wedding night, which was August 4th. I was... When they did my prenatal labs, I, they drew my blood the end of October. They they told me in November. So from August to at least October when they drew my blood is the window of time it took, I guess, for the virus to do whatever. So August, September, October, so two to three months, which is the typical time range that is that window period where we say, hey, in this window period is when you need to go and get tested. So, yeah. Um, I need to buy your book. I think your life story is so interesting. Yeah, if you want to, if anybody wants to purchase a book, just let me know. Reach out to me. I can send you the link. I know a couple people um don't like to use PayPal. I have a Cash App if you want to do that. Um, 
But yeah. Only if people ask. Like literally, you guys know me. Only if somebody asks about a book is when I post it or talk about it. Um let's see. The books are $15. That includes tax and shipping. So $15 flat rate. That's it. Uh, first time viewing. Hey, Carl Russell. Thank you for viewing. I really appreciate it. Hey, Jennifer. I look 25. Oh, oh, hold up. Cabbage Patch. Cabbage Patch. I look 25. So I look still. I still look 25. Hey. I was. I was 24. Um, let's see. I could really dance, y'all. I was just clowning with the little cabbage pad. I don't want y'all to be like, oh, she ain't got no rhythm. She can't dance. It's time for the twerk -a It's time for the... Okay, yeah. I could dance. I'm just saying. <laughs> um, let's see. All right. I, every time I think I'm almost at the end, I keep scrolling. And I ain't at the end. It's still scrolling. It's still scrolling. It's still scrolling. <laughs> TT! My TT boo. TT, who you commenting to? I can't. Oh, Shay. I don't even see that comment. I must have missed that one. Well, thank you, TT. TT is my boo. So if she responds to you, she know what she talking about. Uh-uh. No. Cut it out. All right. I'm, I'm going to get off of here in a minute because they starting to get a little red bunches back there. Um. Okay, cool. We the same age, and I bet we look good for our age, girl. I'm going to go look at your profile. I be nosy. Look, I'm bad. I'm going to tell y'all. People be like, they'll run up to me in the store. They be like, hey, Ladybird. And I'm looking like, hey, how you doing? You know, I don't, I, how, I'm bad at looking at profiles. I don't look at people's profiles. So, I don't never know how half the people I talk to and look. How they look. Because I don't ever look. Girl, do you want me, you want these hands? No. I want Jessica Turner. Well, then you have to sit down and be patient. Do you know what patient means? What's patient? Patient means you have to be calm and you have to wait. How do I get calm? By doing your breathing. You got to. Myself. All right, so breathe in what? Welcome How do you do? Show, you have to smell the what? Flowers. Smell the flowers and do what? Blow out the what? Blow the candle. Okay, so go over there and smell the flowers and blow out the candle five times, okay? How do I do that? I'm. Move. When I'm done, talk to me. How do I do that? Look, mommy mode again. Do do that, mommy? Ooh, they mad. Now nah, she mad because I told How her do I do the way. That? <laughs> All right. No, that's my daughter. That's Michelle. Oh, that, so my twins are girl and a boy. My son is nonverbal. He ain't asleep. He ain't think about nobody. Uh, where are your live videos from? You first went live that you had HIV. Oh, Black Princess. Um, oh, they're on this page. If you go on my videos on this page, they're somewhere in there. There's videos on here. Um. If you go on YouTube, there's videos on YouTube. Um, if you, I don't know, they're Bradley. everywhere. I have a 17 year old. Can he read your book? Absolutely. My book is 17 year old friendly. I think my book probably has maybe a whole three cuss words in it. And that's probably it. <laughs> now, if you got a little more than that, I'm sorry. But I know it's not, it's not full of like curse or nothing like that. It's. But, um, yeah. Oh, goodness. I love you too, TT. Thank you, Nita. All right. I have to say I'm going to share this with my little cousin that started to become sex that. Oh, please do. Listen. Listen. Share it with the, with the, the youngsters because they need it, y'all. They need it. Listen, my daughter... Thank, thankfully, she ain't got there yet, and she done graduated high school. But look, just the thought of it, it's, it's almost like thinking about your parents having sex. Do I really want to think about my parents having sex, let alone my child? Like, no. Don't do it. <laughs> just stay the way you are forever, right? 
Um, I'm going to post the link, Trisha, when I get, as soon as I end this live, I'm going to immediately post the link to the group. So look for, as soon as I end the live, give me about less than five minutes to post it and you should see it there, okay? Um, let's see. Oh, Marie Shay said, wow, is she still with her husband? Girl, hell no, I ain't with that man. I want to say something else. Tara Lynn, how do I feel about prep? Prep is amazing. If used properly and people use it for what it's for, prep is what it is amazing. It really is. It can allow people to have relationships and not just with people who are also positive. Like the whole thing that... Girl, do you want me to come over there and string you up? The thing is... People always feel like because you're HIV positive, you have to be with somebody else that's HIV positive, and you don't. Love has no status, color, nothing, none of that. No age, race, none of that. Love has no boundaries. And so to be able to have a pill that can allow someone who's HIV negative to still fall in love with somebody who's HIV positive and remain HIV negative is amazing. You know? And what time is it? Because I don't want to be able to. All right. So I'm going to get a few more minutes and then I'm going to get off of here. Um, my cash app is here. I'll, I'll do it this way. Just because. Uh, and don't forget, if you send a cash app for a book, inbox me your address so that I can um, ship it. Just and, and, and screenshot the, the thing so I know who the cash tag goes to who. <laughs> Cause you know everybody cash tag is not their name. Mine Could definitely isn't. Okay, I will. Lord, they getting antsy over here, y'all. Stacy, may God continue to bless you and your family. You're an amazing for sharing your story, your bravery, and transparency will inspire others. Thank you so much. And I am gonna go back through and like and heart and comment on con <laughs> stuff too. So, do you plan to have any more kids in the future? Hell no. Hell to the no, no, no. No, I'm actually, I, he, my, my husband doesn't have any kids. We're both 38. We're both 38. My husband does not have any kids. Um, my youngest is seven. Do I really want to start over with diapers and all this? No. We done. No. Mm -mm. Ain't no children, you know. And when I go to my, when I go to the um, GYN on August the 9th, because I do have um, fibroids in my uterus and all that stuff. If they want to take it, they can take it. Here it go. On a silver platter for you. Take it all out. Because at this point, I'm just done. I'm done. Where you at, men of cause, with your little funky eye? You know, I'm ready because I can't deal with all this. <laughs> um, Let's see. Thank you so much. Who's that? Annie. Girl, sit down. I will get it. I'm almost done, okay? Uh-huh. Well, calm down. Sm uh, smell the flowers and blow out the candles. Um, could you come for me? I'm not counting. You know how to count. I can't count myself. All right. I'm finna wrap this up, y'all. Let me scroll real fast. Don't y'all ask no more questions, okay? If you do answer another question and I don't an get to it, I'll respond on the post. Thank you, Reese. Reese says she love my personality. You 39? Oh, look. We all look good for our age, don't we? Okay, 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 okay. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Yes, my current husband is, yes. Um, you my best friend? Go, best friend. That's my best friend. Yes, she finna. She finna. Yes, TT. TT is my boo. I love you too, Black Princess. Um, no, Reese. My son is nonverbal because my twins were born when I was six months pregnant. So they were born at 23 weeks and six days. My water broke. I was stressed. New diagnosis. I'm on bed rest. Um, I'm dealing with all this stuff. Back and forth. Courts, judges. Because I had done already filed charges to have him put in jail. And I'm stressed. So I'm on bed rest and my water broke. So that's why, so they were born preemies, micro preemies. My son was one pound, six ounces. My daughter was one pound, seven ounces. They're now 13 years old. 
he does have he has cerebral palsy so he is in a wheelchair um so yeah look look the, the 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 higher powers knew what they was doing i had a son that i have been taking care of in the wheelchair and he sent me a fine that fine man in the wheelchair boom <laughs> look and i told him he better not try me i stick a, a stick i put a stick in his wheels and he won't be able to roll nowhere <laughs> i always be joking with him but oh uh, let's see so my the the person that infected me he lives in south carolina he's in greenville south carolina and i'm here i don't see him i ain't got no reason to see him if i go to greenville or spartanburg i don't plan on passing by you heard michelle she is she ready to eat they greedy but listen michelle is on a diet because michelle is 13 years old she's five feet five inches tall so she 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 all she my height and she 185 pounds so she on a diet so she just gonna be hungry till i get ready to give her because it's not hungry it's big eye that's what it is right now okay um all right so all these other questions um i'm going to answer offline all right you guys so again i thank you guys so much for coming on here you're a twin too i'm a twin my mom miscarried my twin um my mom miscarried my twin and i hung in there because i had to hang in there so i could come on here and tell y'all all this stuff i'm telling y'all that's why see I was born with purpose, okay? <laughs> I know. Y'all probably like, this girl is crazy. But, yeah, I'm a twin, too. I had a twin brother. My mom miscarried him um, when she was praying with me. Uh, and so, yeah. So, shout out to all the twinsies. All right. So, yes i do travel to speak of course with COVID right now that hasn't been happening but i travel and speak and do different things like that um i'm gonna post it i'm gonna post let me see hold on i might be able to i might be able to pin it to this post so hold on let me go on facebook for my computer and get the link uh where's my girl i'm talking about nobody I hope you're responsible. All right, let me type it real quick. So y'all bear with me for a second while I type it, and then I'm going to pin it. So when I pin this link, you should be able to click it and go directly to the group and hit the join button. So it is facebook.com forward slash groups. Or slash Ladybird exclusive. All right, so when you click on this link, it should work. And like I said, I am going to pin it to the comments. So when you click that link, it should take you to the group. Once I get the notifications that you're requesting to join the group, I am going to approve it. Again, I'm going to be doing giveaways in my group. We're going to be talking unfiltered in my group. If you want to ask questions anonymously, listen, there is an amazing feature in the group that allows you to post anonymously. So if you want to share something with the group and want it to be private, nobody know who posted it, you can post anonymously. Now, I do have to approve all posts, but you have the option to post anonymously. And I'm going to do a test. Matter of fact, let me do it right now. Um, I'm just do. Let me see. There's an option when. So when you go to the group, if you want to post, there's going to be an option that says anonymous post or post vi post photo or video. So it's going to ask you to. You want to do anonymous post? It says it's going to appear in the group without your name. Your name will still be visible to me. So I will know who posts only. Um, details you include in your anonymous post can reveal your identity. So 
Make sure that if you don't want nobody to know who you are, don't put the details in there. Um, anonymous posts are submitted directly to the admin, so directly to me. And then once I post it, um, you'll get a notification that it was posted, okay? So I'm just going to do a real test real quick before we get off of here. I'm going to do an anonymous post test. Will it let me do it? It probably... Let me see. Create anonymous host. It might not let me do it because I'm the admin. That sucks. Yeah. Let me see. I will have to go to my other page. Um, who in the group? Let me see. I'm going to do it early. I'll do a test thing later for my other page in the group. Um, so, yeah. All right, you guys. I'm going to get off of here. That's that link. So, once I get, once I see it, I'll approve you guys in the group. I'm going to get them some food because they hungry and they, they, I don't need them acting crazy. Um, all questions that you guys ask that I didn't get to, I will respond to them individually. If you have questions you don't want to ask openly, you can inbox me. Again, this video is also getting shared to YouTube. So if you're watching this on YouTube right now, thank you for watching. Thank you for tuning in. I hope everyone is having an amazing weekend. And thank you guys so, so much for interacting with me and, and all that good stuff. Y'all have a wonderful, amazing day, and I will talk to you soon. Oh, before I get, don't forget, come back at 6.30. I will be doing a, um, a live video with Miko. Miko has some very important um, information to share with you guys about health insurance. So if you don't have health insurance, you know somebody who doesn't have health insurance, we're going to talk about it. All right, so see you guys at 6.30 p.m. Bye.